While citizens of Croatia were initially divided over whether to remain in Yugoslavia, the separatists were led by the most extreme elements, remnants of the pro-Nazi Ustasha. As the New York Times columnist A.M. Rosenthal would write, in World War II, Hitler had no executioners more willing, no ally more passionate than the fascists of Croatia. They are returning from 50 years ago from what should have been their eternal grave, the defeat of Nazi Germany. Adolf Hitler considered Yugoslavia to be an artificial creation of the hated Versailles Treaty, which ended World War I. To break it up, he set up a puppet state, an enlarged Croatia, which also included Bosnia-Herzegovina. As its leader, he appointed the fanatical Croat Ustashi Ante Pavlic. Pavlic had helped plot the assassination of King Alexander, Yugoslavia's first constitutional monarch, in Marseille, France, in 1934. And it was the Germans, the German Nazis, who picked up this dreadful um, uh, Ustashi leader, uh, who had made quite clear that he favoured Hitler's solution to be applied, which Hitler's his final solution for the Jews, he wanted to apply to the Serbs, he made no secret of it. Simon Wiesenthal, who tracked Ustashi fugitives for decades, along with other Nazi war criminals, told an interviewer, I must admit, I am obsessed by the criminal character of the independent state of Croatia. Even the Germans were appalled by the crimes committed in it. How many men, women, and children died there? Hitler's special envoy to the Balkans, Hermann Neubacher, wrote, Leaders of the Ustashi boast that they have slaughtered one million Orthodox Serbs. On the basis of official German reports, I estimate the number to be three quarters of a million. Most of these Serbian civilians perished in the notorious Croatian death camp, Jasenovac, amongst peoples. Following the death of Yugoslavia's longtime leader, Tito, in 1980, right-wing emigre organizations took out an advertisement on the opinion page of the New York Times, stating that Yugoslavia would not survive, and offering a map which included all of Bosnia as part of Croatia. It was a map nearly identical to the Nazi-created independent state of Croatia. By 1990, as communism was collapsing in Eastern Europe, Croatian separatists pinned their hopes on a former communist general named Franjo Tuđman, who had been jailed for excessive nationalism by Tito in the 1970s. You know, I met him very soon after he came out of communist jail, while uh, Tito was still alive. He had then championed the uh, racialist nationalist form of nationalism. And uh, when he came out of prison, instead of doing what you would think a dissident would do and say, to hell with the communists. He said, oh, well, it has nothing to do with the regime. It's those horrible Serbs who are oppressing us, and the Serbs are responsible for everything, and the Serbs are guilty, and the Serbs have done it all. Tujman received important help from outside of Croatia in his rise to power. The German Secret Service was enormously active in Croatia and in all of Yugoslavia, trying in the 80s to build bridges between what were called the national communists, Stipe Mesic, Franjo Tudjman, in Yugoslavia, and the Ustasha revanchist organizations which lived in the diaspora of uh, Croatia, that is to say, all of the people of weight and influence who had fled uh, the former Nazi puppet state in 1945. Tudjman found it useful to make come to terms with them, and, and because he was running on this xenophobic platform, there was really no difficulty about it. What was difficult was when he was trying to sell his cause in the West, and he managed to, partly because he had a very good lobby, a very effective and much more effective than the Serbian lobby, and uh, partly because he covered up his intentions. Tujman often embarrassed his most important supporters, such as German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. For instance, Tujman had written a book minimizing the crimes of the Ustashi and claiming that the Holocaust was greatly exaggerated. Thank God my wife is neither a Serb nor a Jew, he told one interviewer. For the national flag, Tujman chose a replica of the checkerboard emblem that flew over the Croatian death camps of World War II, 
where Serbs, Jews, and Gypsies were exterminated. Tujman's anti-Semitic views were covered beneath rhetoric acceptable to the West. With the help of Ruder and Finn, a high-powered American public relations firm, the New York Times found space for General Tujman's new and misleading image on its opinion page. In the article, Tujman promised that there would be no purges against the Serbian population in Croatia if it separated from Yugoslavia. Tujman declared that Croatia was for the Croats. That was his slogan, a racialist slogan. Croatia for the Croats, with the implication people who weren't Croats, and there was a very substantial Serb and Yugoslav mixed variety, um, didn't feel that they had any, they were in fact second class citizens, and he recognized them as such. A full six months before fighting broke out, Serbs were purged from positions in government, news organizations, and the police. Their homes were dynamited in cities such as Zagreb, Zadar, and Dubrovnik. For the first time since World War II, Serbs in eastern Croatia began to flee across the Danube River. The Serbs working in Croatian cities were required to sign loyalty oaths. Those who did not sign were fired. Those who did sign were fired, fired later. Uh, Serb homes, apartments, and businesses were attacked. Any doubt that Tujman himself issued orders for the expulsion of Serbs in Croatia was removed by Tomislav Merčep, a senior member of Tujman's ruling party, the HDZ. Merčep would later be identified by Croatian police reports as one of two Croatian leaders who directed death squads that murdered hundreds of Serbian civilians in eastern Slavonia around Vukovar and Osijek in the fall of 1991. He received little press coverage in the West, but Merčep was, in many ways, the spark that set the fire of war in Slavonia, a disputed region of Croatia where the Yugoslav war began. Merčep's co-leader of the Croatian death squads was Branimir Glavash of Osijek. Unlike more discreet members of the ruling HDZ party, Glavash made no secret of his identification with the World War II Croatian Ustashi as he welcomed returning Croatian prisoners of war. While some French intellectuals were hailing Croatia as part of the new Europe, old and familiar 